Hello there and welcome. I just spent some time with my grandpa Barney and we went to his favorite diner. When the waitress came, he ordered a soup and salad. I ordered a cheeseburger and a large fries with extra rocks. Well, the waitress looked at me pretty strangely and so did my grandpa Barney. Then I explained that salt is a mineral and minerals make up rocks. So all I was asking for was more salt packets. The waitress sighed and Grandpa Barney rolled his eyes. Well, considering I want to be a chemist one day, I thought it was a pretty good joke. Later, when I was squirting ketchup all over my fries, Grandpa Barney asked me what else I knew about salt. I actually had a few facts to share with him. First of all, I knew salt was a natural mineral that every living creature needs to survive. Every cell in our body contains salt and our bodies depend on salt to function properly. I knew the salt we're familiar with, the kind that we sprinkle on our food, is made up of two elements, sodium and chloride. In chemistry, the letters Na stand for sodium and the letters Cl stand for chloride. So I bet if you're in a chemistry lab cafeteria, a shaker of salt is going to be labeled NaCl instead of salt. Those chemists, they're always trying to get a good laugh. <laughs> the sodium and salt helps our body absorb nutrients from our food, which gives us the energy to do all the things we love to do. For me, it's playing soccer in the park. For my grandpa Barney, it's playing ping pong. The right balance of sodium in our blood also ensures it's the right volume. This helps our heart pump blood more efficiently through our body. This is pretty important for any kind of activity, even sleeping. The chloride in salt helps our muscles move and make sure our brain gets messages from our nervous system. Our nervous system runs throughout our body and detects all the sensations in our environment, like the heat of a grill, the smell of a burger cooking, or the sight of melty cheddar cheese. The nervous system then sends these messages to the brain. In response, our brain might tell us to stand back from the grill, start drooling, or call out for the first cheeseburger. In other words, the nervous system is the master coordinator within our body, and it needs chloride to function well. There's another reason we need the chloride in salt. There are gastric juices in our stomach helping us to break down and digest the food we eat. Hydrochloric acid makes up a part of these juices, and the name is a big clue. Hydrochloric acid is made up of hydrogen and chloride. That means chloride is a big part of our digestion too. If you look at a grain of salt up close or even under a microscope, you can see it's a crystal. A very hard, very brittle crystal that just happens to be tasty too. And since it's a crystal, it has many different sides that reflect light. That's why salt appears shiny and translucent, which means partially clear. Chemists will tell you that any kind of salt is what's formed when an acid and a base react. An acid and a base are two elements that are strongly attracted to each other based on their electrical charges. Sodium and chloride are an acid and a base that are attracted to one another, and when they get together, they form the kind of salt we can eat. And speaking of eating salt, it's the saliva in our mouth that does the work of breaking down salt so our body can use it. The chemical bonds of salt break apart in water. That's why our mouth goes dry and we get thirsty when we've eaten super salty foods. Our body is using more and more saliva in our mouth and water in our body to break down the salt. Now, considering we have such a high content of salt in our body, it makes sense why our blood, sweat, and tears are salty fluids. Grandpa Barney always says it took blood, sweat, and tears to win his ping pong championship medal. And I believe him. He probably felt awfully salty afterwards. That's another joke for chemists. And by the way, Grandpa Barney shared an important fact with me. Germs can't live in salt. This makes salt helpful in preventing infections. 
He told me I should gargle with salty water the next time I had a sore throat and see what happened. The salt would help with the swelling and soothe the pain. He also told me that because germs can't live in salt, it's used as a preservative in foods too. Canned goods, packaged foods, and items on a restaurant menu tend to have a lot of extra salt to make them last longer without spoiling. I asked Grandpa Barney if he knew where salt came from, and he knew all about the two main sources, seawater and salt mines. He told me the salt that Grandpa Babs likes to use in her cooking comes from evaporating the water from salt water. This is a pretty common process for producing salt. Grandpa Barney happens to like the salt that's mined from the Himalayan mountains and is a little bit pink from the other minerals in it. I understood how you could leave salt water out to dry in the sun and eventually the water would evaporate, leaving salt behind but I didn't know why there would be salt underground. Grandpa Barney explained there were salt deposits all over the earth. These were places that were once ocean, but then dried up. He said he's seen pictures of enormous caves carved out of salt deposits below the earth's surface, and even a hotel made entirely of salt. Well, then I had an even trickier question for him. Why is the ocean salty in the first place? Grandpa Barney knew that too. He described how rain droplets combine with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and create a slightly acidic water by the time they've hit the earth. This acidic water erodes rock into small particles which eventually reach the ocean. Those particles contain the electrically charged atoms we know as sodium and chloride. The ocean isn't magically salty all on its own. It's constantly getting fed the two ingredients that come together to make salt from land. And using this logic, we can figure out the oceans are not the only salty places on Earth. Seas and inland bodies of water can be salty too. There are even places where the water is so salty that virtually nothing can live in it. Great examples are the Dead Sea near the country of Jordan and the Great Salt Lake in the state of Utah. I was almost finished with my hamburger when I remembered my grandpa Barney calling his ping pong partner Wayne the salt of the earth. I asked him what that meant and he explained it was something people said as a compliment since salt has been so valuable throughout history. Salt was even used as payment for work in ancient cultures. This would explain why my grandpa Barney has emphasized I need to be worth my salt when I have a job one day. I offered my last fry to grandpa Barney and asked him one final question. Why did he think salt made everything taste so delicious? He didn't exactly know, and even scientists aren't exactly sure. Some think salt has a way of decreasing bitter flavors on our tongue and therefore certain foods taste better to us. Others think salt delivers sweet flavors more efficiently to our taste receptors and that's why chocolate and cookies and ice cream taste more delicious with a touch of salt. Others have figured out that salt increases the number of scent molecules in the air from our food. Since our brain tells us anything that smells good is going to taste good, it's possible that we just think a salty food tastes better. And still other people, especially chefs, think that salt simply balances out flavors. And of course, it could be some combination of all these things. However, like anything we eat, too much salt is not a good thing. Grandpa Barney told me he has to be careful about his salt intake because it will raise his blood pressure. He explained when salt enters our blood, the water content of our blood rises, and therefore the volume of our blood increases. This puts strain on the walls of our blood vessels and causes them to thicken. These passages become narrower and narrower and force our heart to work harder and harder to pump blood throughout our body. 
Also, when blood is traveling through narrower blood vessel passages, less oxygen and nutrients are getting transported to other cells. Not to mention, our kidneys have to work overtime processing all that salt. Overall, too much salt can do a lot of damage. I told Grandpa Barney it was a good thing he had a salad, and he had one last fun fact for me. The word salad comes from the Latin word meaning salted, because the ancient Romans would often dip their lettuce leaves in salt before eating them. He also told me that salt will hide in a lot of foods, and I should be careful too. Cheesy pizza, sandwich meats, chips, breakfast cereal, packaged snacks, and condiments like ketchup all have lots and lots of salt. We need salt every day, but really just a tiny amount, not half a salt shaker's worth. I thought about this and told Grandpa Barney I'd eat salad for every meal from here on out, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He said he'd take that idea with a pinch of salt, which I later found out means he wasn't taking me too seriously. Here are some salty fun facts. The concentration or percentage of salt in our body is practically identical to seawater. The green color of an emerald comes from a salt called chromium oxide. At a dining table in the Middle Ages, the salt was always placed closest to the person of the highest social rank. The salt in our tears is thought to prevent the growth of bacteria and prevent eye infections. Some scientists believe we've evolved to like salt because our bodies need it for survival. If only the same reasoning worked for ice cream. <laughs> only 6% of the salt produced in the United States is actually used in foods. Our bodies normally carry about half a pound of salt. Salt has the special ability to lower the freezing point of water. This is why icy roads get spread with salt, to melt the ice and keep the roads from freezing easily in cold temperatures. If you'd like to do some more salty study, here are some possible activities. Investigate all the ways salt can be used other than in cooking. You'll be surprised at the answers. Study the chemical bond of NaCl. Draw it out or create a 3D model of this impressive ionic bond. Once upon a time, salting crops was the ultimate revenge. Find out why it worked and which cultures were guilty of this awful crime in history. Do you love to cook or bake? Take a look at the different salts available in the grocery store. Compare and contrast what they look like, how they can be used in cooking or baking, and their price. There are tourist attractions all over the world made entirely of salt. Find where they are, label them on a world map, and create a brochure featuring your favorites. Experiment with density by comparing how various objects behave in a tub of fresh water as opposed to a tub of salty water. Take notes and share your findings. Salt is a fun art supply. Make salt of different colors and create a salty piece of artwork. Or look up a recipe for a homemade salt dough to use for modeling clay. One last thing I'll say about salt. I happen to know that some ancient cultures believed if you shared something salty with another person, it created a bond of friendship. So the next time Grandpa Barney and I go to the diner, I'm going to order a salad but also a small order of salty french fries to split. See you next time. We are thrilled that you're watching Blues Studios 24 seven. We're so excited to bring round the clock entertainment and educational content to your home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. At Blue Studios, we aspire to revolutionize the way families spend time together. We empower families by providing them with tools to work together, earn and learn, and achieve new heights of success. 
visit www.bluestudios.io to discover more about our mission and how we empower families to succeed. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Keep watching and learning with us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.